So the big question this week, obviously we have WWE Roadblock coming up this weekend as of this recording. And uh, WWE has always had some really interesting kind of, I don't know if I want to call them experimental shows or one-off shows, or maybe they had a couple of them, um, you know, and, 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 you know, some interesting concepts or WCW or ECW, even if you want to count that some of those. Um, so I thought we'd go around the horn. And the big question is, I want to make sure I word this right. What is your favorite? Let's just call them oddball one-off ish shows that, uh, that, uh, that, 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 that you've had over the years that kind of stick out in your mind. Um, if I can set the pace here, what the one I'm thinking, and I've talked about this before on the show, I've always, I've always been, um, I, I don't know, it's because I found the tape back at the video shelf back home and rented it all the time and ended up purchasing the tape um, when it was previously viewed. Um, but there was this weird, I, I presume, closed caption show that they did called The Big Event. It was at um, wherever the Blue Jays, I, no, no, the Expo? No, Blue Jays, Toronto. I believe it was in Toronto. Hmm. Um, I'm going to try to bring it up here. Um, it was I. It was actually the only one that I'm aware of of the era WWF baseball stadium show, headlined by Paul Orndorff. Yes, versus, two arms, two arms at that point. Yes, very much two <laughs> arms at this point. Uh, versus Paul Hogan for the championship. Um, and yeah, there it is. There is the big event. That's there's awesome. some there's some graphics from it. That's that's what the VHS looks like. Coliseum home video. Yes. Just nice low shot of Hulk Hogan, which is probably appropriate considering the most recent um news in the Gawker thing that I'm not getting into. Um hold on, I want to pull up some info here. It emanated in uh at August twenty eighth, nineteen eighty six, Exhibition Stadium in Toronto, Ontario. Again, I believe that's where the Blue Jays played huh. at the at the time. Um highlights from this for me were Ricky Steamboat and Jake Roberts in a snake pit match. I can't remember the rules of a snake pit match, but I know, I'm pretty sure this is back when Ricky Steamboat was taking a kimono dragon to the ring. Oh, man. And Bobby Heenan was wondering about it, or whoever was announcing was worried about it getting out and into the river um, (laughs) um, in Toronto. Uh, You guys remember the machines? Yes, I remember yeah. the machine. And Giant Machine. Yes. Giant mm-hmm. Machine, who may bear a res- resemblance to Andre the Giant. No. Uh, maybe. No, maybe. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Ru Joe's faces against the Dream Team. This was one of my only uh, early interactions while uh, watching the Dream Team of Greg Valentine and Bruce BK before he uh, cut hair. Uh, <laughs> Junkyard Dog, Adrian O'Jonis. I mean, this was. What is happening? Scissors. Scissors. Oh, <laughs> was there, Bobby, you got to get you with the scissors. Do it, man. <laughs> Boom, bum, Beautiful oh, Bobby Beefcake. Yep. Da, 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 Beautiful da, Bobby da, Beefcake. Da. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful Bobby Adonis. Um, anyways, uh, but no, that, that was kind of, it would happen one time. It was kind of a, its own thing, and it, it had a different feel to everything else. So that was mine. That was mine. And there's several different ways you guys can take this. Uh, who's, who's got an event they want to share? Ooh, I, I got one that I'm pretty excited about. It just hit me like, like a lightning bolt. And that is this Tuesday in Texas. Ooh. You guys remember that? Ooh. That was the first time that I knew that the WWF at the time was just trying to screw me out of paying more pay-per-view money. And uh, Because if you recall, it was Survivor Series 91, I believe, mm-hmm. where The Undertaker beat Rick, oh, I mean, The Undertaker beat Hulk Hogan. No, yeah, with help from Ric Flair, right? That was the yeah. the plot. Yeah. And um, I can't remember. I think Jack Tunney came out and cut a promo <laughs> about this being just a, a a total injustice in the uh in the in the world of wrestling, and that it should never happen. That you know, Ric Flair slipped a a, a steel chair when uh when Hogan was getting tombstone pile driven. Um. Because of course it could it could never be a clean finish with our our friend who's currently um, you know testifying about certain things, and um, so they had to have a makeup pay per view the Tuesday two days after the Survivor Series of that Sunday. So and the thing was is it was a pay per view you had to pay again to get this Tuesday in Texas, and I think you got a discount if you had bought in the survivor series 91 show but if you and you had to prove it somehow probably with like 
carbon copy paper and fax machines because again we're talking about <laughs> 1991. But um, you know, the only match I really remember from if it's this Tuesday in Texas, I think that's the title of it, or just Tuesday in Texas. I can't, I can't really remember. Uh, it, it's it's a little bit of both. For, I think it's officially this. No, it is this Tuesday in Texas. Actually, yeah, okay. according to this graphic, I had never actually seen this. Oh, I saw it I until saw it. <laughs> the WWE Network. Oh, really? Because it was one of those first things. I'm like. I can finally see Tuesday in Texas. Yeah. After all these years. And the only match I remember is Hogan and, and Undertaker, and obviously Hogan going over because God forbid he dropped the strap for more than 48 hours. But I don't remember the rest of the card, even though I watched it while it was happening. But that's the one I wanted <laughs> to uh, stroll down nostalgia and memory lane. And- By the way, emanating from San Antonio, Texas. Oh, there what? we go. Hey. Hey, it got a hey there. disappointing 1.0 buy rate. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Who else is on the card? Do you have it? Do you have it? Up I or? have it here on the uh, the wiki the wiki machine, uh, <laughs> and I don't think all of these were on the pay per view necessarily. It was no, really short. There from were, what I remember, there were eight dark matches. Oh wow! Nice. And the dark matches seem more interesting than the actual show. Remember, this was the big payoff of Randy Savage against Jake Roberts with the snake bite. Oh. Repo, oh. Repo, and Ted DiBiase against El Matador and Virgil. <laughs> What's that match? What's this um, so weird? Just can't, just can't stop him. You know, nope. Bret Hart defeated Skinner. God, <laughs> what a God, Bulldog! Man. The British Bulldog uh, against defeated Warlord. Now here's the here's Bulldog the, and Warlord. Here's Jesus, the dark match. The Diana Ball match. Diana Ball on a pole <laughs> match. <laughs> <laughs> but like the dark matches were Legion of Doom against the Beverly's, Ric Flair against Piper, Nasty oh. Boys and Bushwhackers, <laughs> Valentine and the Brawler. Oh, and then Flair it gets the other names. But uh How wow. could they not show Flair and Piper? I know, were they taped for something else? Maybe they were taped for like a Saturday Night's main event or something? Maybe. maybe? I just remember it was really short. And yeah. that was another thing where you paid all this money and it was a really short pay per view. It was five matches. Yeah, it was. It's, it's insane. Yeah, and I still. Is that the first in your house? <laughs> Pretty much. See, I I was absolutely confused because I had no no cable at this point. Right. And I'm like, what? There's another thing. What? And yeah. and this is this is the thing. At the time, if there was a big pay per view like the Royal Rumble, that meant I get to go to my grocery store, and there was a program. <laughs> there was a program that I could buy. Nice for the Royal Rumble. I wouldn't see the Royal Rumble until like three months down the line when it came out on VHS yep. tape Call from Coliseum Home Video. Home Video. Yep. Bing. But I got to hear about it, what happened. I got to look at the matches and I get amazed yeah. when the matches actually on there didn't entirely match. Ooh. I went through one of the Royal Rumbles to see where everybody was yeah. in the program. Oh, man. <laughs> What year do you remember? Uh, this is probably 90, 90, 91 ish. Okay. I was getting these. I have a couple of the SummerSlam ones too. Yeah. I still have them here, actually. That's awesome. Some of them are probably marked up because I think I put like win loss things. Yeah. And yeah. 91, Rick Martell. He he went for a long time. In That's that right. Those were the days. Those, Those were, the, were the, days. the days. Amon, do you have a show? I do have a show. And I uh, I had a feeling this would count. This is, this is sort of count. Stay with me. Uh, and it's it's kind of an older one for my time. Uh, I think I was maybe two when this came out. Um, <laughs> so stay with me. But I remember I, I watched it from uh, DVD compilations I was getting that featured matches from the show. And so I kind of just eventually discovered more of it. Uh, and uh, I mean, technically it's from a major promotion because it was produced by WCW. Uh, but it's the uh, AAA When Worlds Collide event uh, I think from 94, I want to say. Uh, and it was basically the first time that it had gotten broadcasted to like a major audience. And, and I believe there was American commentary and, and there was the opportunity for Americans to kind of see that, that style of Lucha Libre. Uh, there's a very young Rey Mysterio in it. Uh, uh, which I remember, I believe it's on the like Rey Mysterio's first like WWE DVD. Um, there's a really good uh, Eddie Guerrero or Bar tag team match. Um, there's there's good stuff on there, and it, it, I think it was my first glimpse as a new fan getting into wrestling of Lucha Libre. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's very different, obviously. And it, it, this is in uh, Los Angeles, actually, at the mm. LA um, 
uh, whatever the, I guess the, the sportatorium, whatever uh, building it was. But yeah, uh, very different, obviously, and very cool to see that being broadcasted on that kind of a level. So uh, they do have videos. And obviously, and obviously, I was going to say, and obviously was a precursor to the stuff with the Cruiserweight from WCW. Right. Uh, they, they do have at least clips on WWE.com. I'm, I'm trying to see if they actually included like with WCW um, mm-hmm. as far as... Um, you say it's a, it was officially uh, uh, like promoted by them. Is that the case? It was. Pro- I believe it was promoted, and I know it was produced by WCW's team. I'm not. Um, I'm not immediately yeah. seeing it, unfortunately. On yeah, the uh, just a quick search. That'd be a great thing, really, though. That, that'd be a great thing if they it. did. They have yeah, they have it, and they have clips of it on WWE.com. Uh, so I wonder if that's one of those things that, you know, dig it up. Hey, write your uh, uh, WWE Wrestling Network uh, representative and see if they'll put it out there. Because <laughs> it was the only time they had the show. Like, it, was a, it was one show. So Yeah. Uh, well, that'd be weird. Um, you do some digging. Uh, Elliot, do you have a show you want to share? Well, I, I started I started looking at – I started trying to jog my memory in the Wikipedia. And then I saw one that I haven't seen that I need to see called It Ain't Seinfeld. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> this literally happened. This is an event that happened in ECW the day the last episode of Seinfeld aired. They had a oh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on the network, so you're going to have to YouTube it. But if you do, <laughs> or whatever, you got to find it some other kind of way. I don't know. You got to find a VHS at a VHS store or something. But, um, the The logo is freaking outstanding. So just just Google image of the logo. It's great. But yeah, so so ECW had It Ain't Seinfeld airing the same night as the last episode of Seinfeld. So. Coincidentally, that's also the porn parody of Seinfeld's name. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it is or not. But that's... <laughs> that's great. Uh, oh, no, no. This is, you know, actually, if you look at the cover of the ECW uh, release for this, you really can't tell a different in quality from a porn release. So, I mean, that is some that is some rough photoshopping going on there in 1990, whatever. Um, wow, what's the card? Who's on it? Featuring Bam Bam Bigelow, Ooh. Tommy Dreamer, Sabu, and Just Incredible. Hey, did you see Sabu at the Arnold? No, just, just walking around what? in a suit in the head towel. Ah, I didn't see that. Matt Carlin said, "Mainstream Matt side." I was just oh, like, "What?" So he pissed. just like, yeah, we we got done uh, interviewing the NXT ah. guys for him, and um, he's like, "I'm." He, he tells me afterwards, he's like, "I had it in my head. I'm, I know I'm going to run into another uh, wrestler here." And, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and I was like, I'm completely going to talk to him see if we can, we could talk to him. And he's like, he saw Sabu. He's like, I'm not talking to Sabu. I'm not talking to Sabu. <laughs> Where was he? Was he by the NXT stuff? He or? was near the main stage when we saw him. This was late oh, okay. Saturday. So damn it. We should probably I'm have a so segment. disappointed. We should probably have a small segment where we talk about wrestling onto Arnold here in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but let's do that after Mayhem Mania, uh, here. <laughs> so teaser. Uh, who did we, bo- Bobby? I think you haven't gone, right? I haven't gone yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you got? I'm also gonna go with the Tuesday night event. Ooh. Um, but mine is based solely on the fact that Gene Snitsky said this the best: "Taboo Tuesday." <laughs> <laughs> what? That's, that's what I remember from Gene Snitsky and Kane, their <laughs> feud. Uh, him just saying, "I'll see you at Taboo Tuesday." The cane, but it also had Sergeant Slaughter. It's versus- also a porno, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it had Sergeant Slaughter versus Muhammad Hassan. Oh wow! Uh, Sheldon yes. Benjamin versus Chris Jericho. Uh, Trish Stratus, uh, Molly Holly, Stacy Keebler, Victoria, Gail Kim, Jazz, and Nydia. Man, um, also a porno. But, I mean, and, and, and a fulfill your fantasy battle royal. <laughs> what? That was the one where you get to decide what's yeah. sexy. Yeah. You get, you get the and, and the th- the cool thing about this pay per view was people got to vote on things yeah. via the internet yeah. in the early ages of the internet in two thousand four. I, 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 I want to well, point out not that early. Look internet, at this cover art. Uh, early enough. Look at that giant <laughs> CRT monitor <laughs> with the world championship belt in it. Oh, it's great. I mean, Taboo <laughs> Tuesday awesome. was uh, one of my favorite. Uh, pay-per-view sets because it was basically a giant computer screen with like a keyboard as the as the, as the yeah. ring they really uh, the main event was actually the randy orton versus rick blair huh oh, and it's wow. still cage match so that's yeah. cool yeah 
Uh, which was also like, yeah, it, it was it, it was pretty fantastic, and it was different. It was fascinating because it was 2004, 2005, and I think this became Cyber Sunday for a couple of years. They only had two Tuesday ones. Yeah, um, I don't get WWE's fascination with wanting to do Tuesday night pay per views. Like, I, I like I want to know why. Can somebody can just explain to me? Because also, um, I noticed when I was looking at the Wikipedia for the first Taboo Tuesday, Amen. Uh, it said this was their first Tuesday uh, pay per view since Beware of Dog was apparently on a Tuesday. The in your house, <laughs> in your oh, house man. eight, Beware of Dog. Jeez, yeah, yeah. Is that the one? Oh, be- I'm sorry, Beware of Dog two in 1996. So, Boogaloo. The first. Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um and from the chat room uh garza is singing uh the original white knight stands the ones that were actually about ecw yeah, those absolutely awesome. yeah those were great yeah. all right uh well let us know uh hashtag wms big question uh what is uh what, what, what kind of weird one-off couple off shows i know we kind of talked about off air uh sold out Yep. And, and going back and that that's back when I was watching. Uh, we were buying every WCW pay per view because we were down with the whole NWO <laughs> thing yeah. and, and just into it. Right. And then we saw it sold out come up and like, yeah, we'll skip this one. Yeah, <laughs> a Saturday pay per view if I remember correctly. Was it? Oh, it geez. was. Yeah, and it was in beautiful downtown Cedar Rapids, Iowa, <laughs> in the middle of, of winter. It was actually the day before the Super Bowl. It was the Saturday before the Super Bowl, and wow. the only reason I remember that is because. It was the Super Bowl where my Green Bay Packers beat the New England Patriots back in '96. Yeah, but, yeah. Nice. But um, the funny thing about it, and I don't know if you remember this or not, but they had this big contest to name Miss NWO. But then the problem again is that you're having this event take place in winter in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So the uh, selection of beautiful women from Iowa was uh, slim pickings. <laughs> and so they went and they did this spot over and over again that eventually it resulted in Eric Bischoff like making out with some woman from Iowa. Um, but they did like, they did like a um, profile of all the various contestants of the Miss Iowa's. And what I remember is that, and I don't think this was a work. I think this was legitimately their professions. There was two people who were grain silo, um, like surveyors. They're separate people. <laughs> two women were both grain silo surveyors. And then there was a They're third rivals. woman. Yeah. There's a third one, one woman whose hobbies included detailing trucks and frying bratwurst. And I believe she was the one who won. Now I'm just like, you know what? I think she should win because if you got a woman who can fry up some bratwurst for you and then clean your truck, I think that is a keeper in Iowa and Cedar Rapids. So, you know, kudos to WCW for actually booking something correctly back in 1996. Another thing. That I had to watch after I got the WB Network because I never had. <laughs> and I'm so glad. Oh.